Hi, welcome back to my channel. This episode is entitled, Beware of the Company You Keep. As I continue in the book of Job, I am happening upon a spirit that is very familiar to me. The spirit of depression. If you say that you have never been touched by it, then I am happy for you. When Job's friends first showed up, they sat in silence with him for seven days, seeing his pain and torment. But I questioned what was going through his friends' minds in the seven days as Job cursed the day he was born. Depression is serious. It psychologically torments you. The will to live is weak, and you sleep so that you can escape the harsh realities of life. But I warn you that it is not of God because there is no faith or trust in attempting to avoid or ignore trials and tribulations. But I empathize with why Job cursed the day he was born, as I have done. This spirit doesn't work alone and is accompanied, in most cases, by a self-harming or suicidal force, even such as self-pity and self-destruction working together. Here is the warning. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. It is much more complex, as these spirits slowly torture and torment you, drawing strength and power as they relish in prolonging the attacks watching you endure relentless agony. They say, just end it. Nobody cares. And you don't deserve to live. So deadly and cataclysmic that they not only go after you, but also friends and loved ones that watch helplessly as you slaughter yourself. The most evil and sadistic spirits will target the coward who is okay with taking the lives of others, who never intended to take their own lives, but would then ask that they be shown mercy. And the even more sinister ones that would take the lives of innocents and bystanders only to take their own own lives, spineless, spiritless, and chicken-hearted, deceived, believing they will escape judgment. So let me add this because it happens intentionally every day. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The Spirit has been repeatedly warning me that murderers will not enter his kingdom, even more so lately, yet I digress. At one point, Job even spoke of sorcerers or those who practiced witchcraft cursing his day. 
those who call upon evil, who loves destruction and annihilation. This is how deeply disturbed his spirit was at the time. Let them curse it that curse the day, who are ready to raise up their mourning. I have even felt like this, or as in hidden untimely birth, I had not been as infants which never saw light. The first to speak was Eliphaz the Temanite as he answered, Behold, you have admonished and instructed many, and you have strengthened weak hands. Your words have helped the one who was stumbling to stand, and you have strengthened feeble knees. But now adversity comes upon you, and you are impatient and intolerant. It touches you, and you are horrified. This is not of God. He seems to be mocking Job, calling him a hypocrite. This was affirmed to me of the Holy Spirit, because this is the word that he gave me. He saved others from death. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross and we will believe in him and acknowledge him. Referring to Jesus. Eliphaz then goes on to say, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. Or where were the righteous cut off? This was brought to my remembrance by the Holy Spirit. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Certified by the Spirit with this, blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired, and holy is the person who takes part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death, which is eternal separation from God, the lake of fire, has no power or authority but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him a thousand years. Eliphaz also says, Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Many ungodly people are deceived by this, believing that they must be good people or even others like them, because they seem to live a long life without consequences for their actions. This is where the Holy Spirit led me. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Now, as I close, I want to give a final revelation in this chapter as Eliphaz is speaking. This is rampant today, and many are being led astray by false prophets. Pay attention. Now a thing was secretly brought to me and mine ear received a little thereof. In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. 
Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? What I need you to see is that this spirit was not of God. Hence the lack of capitalization of the letter S, verified by Eliphaz's inability to discern the form. I can't determine his intentions, but I know that the interpretation given is demonic. Always coming from a place of love and in truth. If this is having an impact on your life, continue to watch the channel and visit our website at benevolentwoman.com. Thanks again.